seminary and institute students throughout the world take courses, and some of them, they get a certain amount of church history, especially as background to the revelations in the Doctrine and Covenants. In their Gospel Doctrine Sunday School classes, Latter-day Saints throughout the world study sequentially the Old Testament, New Testament, Book of Mormon, Doctrine and Covenants. And only in the Doctrine and Covenants course is some historical background sometimes included. And even there, the emphasis is on the spiritual and doctrinal content. Finally, at present and for the past few years, priesthood and Relief Society lessons have devoted a year of study to one of the presidents of the church. Some historical background is provided, but once again, the emphasis is on the doctrinal teachings. The message that comes across to me, loud and clear, from all of these directions, is simple. Our testimony is not in the history of the church. So our friendly anti-Mormon comes to us with his version of Mormon history. He has probably picked up his example, as we have said, from other anti-Mormons. He is pretty sure his Latter-day Saint neighbor will not know about it, so he reads it, his, bright, his eyes are bright with anticipation. Gotcha, what do you say to that? In view of that, how can you possibly be a Mormon? If he doesn't say these things, he implies them. And here is where faithful Latter-day Saints should take the wind out of the sails of his critic. Instead of collapsing or coming forth with a wail of distress, you shrug your shoulders and say things like this, hmm, I wonder if that's true. Or that isn't part of my religion, I have never heard it taught in any of the classes, and I have not read it in any of our manuals. You know what? That probably interests you a lot more than it does me. I'm not sure that it's true. I haven't heard what might be said on the other side. But I, know, I do know this, I don't have a testimony of the history of the church. Some of us might deplore the fading of church history from the curriculum. Of course, those interested can still read and study on their own, individually or in study groups. To my knowledge, no one is forbidding such study, and I hope a good deal of it's going on. While I agree that knowledge of the details of church history is not essential to our eternal salvation, I do think it is natural and very satisfying to learn as much about it as we can. As I read about the Latter-day Saints and their activities, I can be inspired, amused, bewildered, surprised, proud, sometimes a little ashamed. More often than not, I am simply amazed at the perseverance, the tenacity, the determination to stay the course through good times and bad. Without even trying, I instinctively identify with the saints. Imperfect as they were and are, the Latter-day Saints are my people. But my testimony is not in them, and I hope theirs is not in me. Brigham Young once made a statement about Joseph Smith that our enemies like to smack their lips over. Missing its point completely, how they love to misuse it. Here's what Brother Brigham said. You've heard this. I reflect a conversation I had with a priest who was an old friend of ours before I was personally acquainted with the Prophet Joseph. I clipped every argument he advanced until at last he began to rail against Joe Smith, saying he was a mean man, a liar, a money digger, a gambler, a whoremonger, and he charged him with everything bad that he could find the language to eat better. I said, hold on, here is the doctrine, here is the Bible the Book of Mormon, and the revelations that have come through Joseph the prophet. I have never seen him and do not know his private character. The doctrine he teaches is all I know about the matter. Bring anything against that that you can. As to anything else, I do not care. If he acts like a devil, he has brought forth a doctrine that will save us, if we will abide it. He may get drunk every day of his life, sleep with his neighbor's wife, run horses and gamble. I do not care anything about that, for I never embrace any man in my faith. But the doctrine he has produced will save you and me, and the whole world, if, if you can find fault with that, find it. And he's, his adversary said, I have done. <clears throat> well, what do you think Brother Brigham meant? You know how the adversaries use it. Was he giving carte blanche to church members, saying that it didn't matter how they behaved? Was he here giving his true feelings about Joseph Smith and actually describing him? Give me a break. If President Young's meaning isn't obvious, let me translate it. 
the truth of the gospel and the divinity of Joseph Smith's calling as prophet of the restoration do not depend on his behavior as a human being and do not require perfection in his life. Did Brigham really think that Joseph was a moral reprobate? That is the way some brilliant anti-Mormons use this quotation. Listen to this, also from Brigham Young. Who can justly say aught against Joseph Smith? I was as well acquainted with him as any man. I do not believe that his father and mother knew him any better than I did. I do not think that a man lives on the earth that knew him any better than I did. And I am bold to say that Jesus Christ accepted no better man ever lived or does live upon the earth. I am his witness. But this is an important truth. President Young did not want his testimony to center on Joseph Smith as a person. Let's consider a statement by President George Q. Cannon. Do not, brethren, put your trust in man, though he be a bishop, an apostle, or a president. If you do, they will fail you at some time or place. They will do wrong, or seem to, and your support is gone. But if we lean on God, he will never fail us. When men and women depend on God alone and trust in Him alone, their faith will not be shaken if the highest in the church should step aside. Perhaps it is His own design that faults and weaknesses should appear in high places in order that His saints may learn to trust in Him and not in any man or woman. I do not have a testimony of church history. In this declaration, I joined Nephi, who said, O oh Lord, I have trusted in Thee, and I will trust in Thee forever. I will not put my trust in the arm of flesh, for I know that cursed is he that putteth his, arm, putteth his trust in the arm of flesh. Thank you very much. We have just time for a few questions here, and I'll present these to you. <coughs> you can answer them as you'd like. I like uh, <coughs> that yes, no, yes, no response. We saw. <coughs> Hasn't this been a great meeting so far? I hope you all. <laughs> I'm not meaning to praise myself there, but uh, I hope you all know about the website of uh, Brent Gardner. I'm a gospel doctrine teacher, and I turn to that on a regular basis. He has a commentary on the Book of Mormon, book by book, chapter by chapter. If you don't know about it, check it out. <clears throat> Critics often use the Journal of Discourses to discredit the church. Does the Journal of Discourses consider church doctrine? No. It's very useful to historians, but you have to know how to use it and, and, and be honest and uh, understand what's going on. Just to pluck out a quotation completely out of context, and uh, that's a shameful way to proceed. A recent article in Sunstone depicted you as a mean Mormon. Guilty. <laughs> I prefer the word stalwart. <laughs> <coughs> Please share your view on Leonard Arrington's testimony. There are many in the New Mormon History Circles who see him as their historian. Leonard had a testimony. Uh, I was, he and I were very close friends and worked closely together for a number of years. We had our offices side by side. Uh, nothing phony, was nothing phony about Leonard. He, he didn't go behind the doors and say, well, we've got him fooled out there now. Uh, you know, there are people who think that someone that knew as much about church history as Leonard Arrington surely couldn't believe it. And I, I, I can just be his witness and say there was a man who had his testimony of the church and of the goodness and the truth of the restored gospel. And he didn't find that it was necessary to pervert or distort church history because he also did not believe that he was required to 
portray all Mormons as perfect people. And so he and I thought alike in, in that respect. Uh, 